getting the death zone pretty quick. Are you okay? Okay, Alan, this is kind of finishing up and proving your handiwork, your workmanship on the the gearing. So let's let's catch people up. What happened? What did you do with this car? Okay, well we used it for about a thousand miles this summer and only had two gears. We had second gear and third gear. We didn't have reverse and first, so we're going to call each of those a, a gear. Um, but it, it's a single cylinder and you think that would be bad, but it had enough torque to be able to do everything we ask of it to do. Uh, the, the shafts were really worn, which we showed in earlier videos that we did. So we got it all done and we had all our trials and tribulations on manufacturing it and, and cutting the gears exactly and getting the right profile and all of that. So what we're going to do today is the proof of concept of the finished product. So coming out of the driveway, we'll use first gear and, and hopefully it'll be nice. And then we'll stop at the end of the driveway, then we'll use reverse. And as we, if you remember back, we, it does not have a reverse gear. It, in fact, it doesn't have a transmission at all. So it has three pinion gears and one ring gear, and it's got an idler. So reverse is actually simply first gear separated from the crown gear and it inserted in between is an idler gear, which reverses the direction of the automobile. So reverse should be the worst combination because you have a crown gear, you have an idler, and you have a pinion, the smallest pinion, and the smallest idler with a giant crown gear. So we're hoping that's quiet. Um, so then we're gonna be driving uh, we'll be driving, you know, 30, 35 mile an hour in second gear, say, on the first part of our trip. And then we'll enter a main road, a quieter main road. And then we'll go ahead and check second gear and third gear, which we, I, we know they're good because we, we didn't change those. But the shaft that they're on is the new shaft we made. And then we also may end up entering the death zone. What is the death zone? Well, this is 1905, 1906. So this was about the end of the period that the political people in power were saying that an automobile could not reach 60 mile an hour and guarantee life of the driver and the people in the car because there'd be no oxygen. It's like Mount Everest above base camp. Okay. So they, they started that uh, about 1900-ish when cars went 20, 25 mile an hour and they kept pushing and pushing it, you know, like Y2K or global war, all these things that political people pu push on you uh, because the speed limits at the time, we just got out of the three to five mile an hour in the city stuff and out in the open road was 15 mile an hour. So the political people didn't want to promise to people we're going to have roads that can ha have traffic at 60 mile an hour or cars that were giant enough engines that go 60 mile an hour and above. So they kind of keep everybody under control that, you know, that was what you were learned. You learned that above 60 mile an hour is it. And then what the racers did, they liked that because the racers also liked the fact that, you know, there's no ambulances, there's no fire trucks really that can reach them. And there's no hospitals really. And the racing was dangerous. And then it's so dangerous that their car might even approach the death zone and be that fast. And they were just going to hold their breath to make sure they didn't die from lack of oxygen by opening in their mouth. <laughs> I thought it had something to do with the wooden wheels and uh, cable actuated mechanical brakes in the back. Well, usually they, they died at four, 35 or 40 with the first big tree or first, first Arroy or jump turn. or something, <laughs> right? <laughs> usually it was something else along the way that killed them. You know, it, it takes a long time to get to 60 mile an hour right. if, you're, you know, if your baby buggy only has one or two cylinders. Okay. So everybody, we will count the chugs of the single cylinder and we'll see how fast we go and we'll make sure we listen for the gears. We're going to prove everything out. So far, so good. Yep. I don't hear much whine from the No, gears. me neither. So that's first gear. So now we'll, okay. we'll get to the point and we'll find reverse. Okay. 
We're going too fast. Oh, we are going backwards. We are definitely going backwards. I hear a tiny bit of something, but that's just probably what it would normally be. We can go a couple miles. We spent two months making it go backwards. We might as well go a long way. We may as well get our money's worth. <laughs> okay. Okay, I guess it works. I think it works very well. It's actually very smooth. Yep. They're gonna, they're yielding to uh, the elderly here. Changing gears in the middle of the intersection, Alan. Are we in second gear? Yeah, we're already. Okay. That's wild. So we're going 30, 25 to 30 in the neighborhood. Yeah, and we're, uh, Going up a little hill, small incline. Yeah, a little bit. A good amount of something. Somebody bump, 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 bump. How are the drippers doing? Yeah, they're dripping. Yeah. Or so. Have you calculated the gear ratios as far as final drive? Four to one. Four to one. Instead of downshifting, I can pull the timing back and I can lug it in any gear. Oh, that's what you're doing there. So we need to watch how you're using the timing of the cam. It is the cam timing, isn't it? It's cam timing here, magneto timing there. Ah, you got both, okay. So I could to get more power at low end, low RPM, pull the timing back to accelerate uh -huh. because it's, it's, you don't need a, a lot of timing if you don't have very many RPM. Right. Then once you have some RPM, you advance your timing and it, it accelerates. Interesting. Interesting, yeah. Instead of all the shifting. So if you aim out the back, there's no smoke at all anymore. It's absolutely clean as a bell. That's fantastic. And this thing is running better than new. <laughs> yeah. So now we're retarded again. So now we're going really slow. And we're retarded and it picked it up, pick up the speed. Okay. So I'm just instead of I didn't downshift, we just keep it like this. You know, you don't need to advance it if there's not spinning a, a bunch of RPM. You're right. And and the magneto does not advance. Okay. So you have to actually be your own advancer. That's why you put it on the foot. So we're retarded right now so we can we could go down to literally 100 RPM and, and come go through here, which is what we were doing in the one video that we're going, oh, yeah. you know, 10 mile an hour in high gear. Right. And the, and the car doesn't care. Yeah, it's happening no matter what. Yep. But it's nice for you to know 
Now we'll enter the open road. Okay. Oh, yeah. Open. Okay, there's 40. No smoke at all when you're. That was perfect. Isn't it? That's perfect. I think we've developed this car to the nth degree. You really have. And it was, uh, to your credit, it was pretty sad and. Yep. Run down. But you had a vision for it. Yep. Do you share? You share information. You share the cars. You. Yep. You drive them around. The same. The same information from me on each car, each time. So it's. You know, to keep it, keep it pretty honest. Pull the timing back. You know, we're in high gear, but since we have our timing back, it doesn't care. It doesn't even care at five or 10 mile an hour or whatever, 15. We're making it as versatile as it could possibly be by the technologies at hand, which is what they put into it. Yeah. came we went all right well let's let's well before you get out of the car yeah we've just been on a nice cruise yeah we actually met a very nice person that was yes, interested we did. in the car and uh what do you think i mean those gears are quiet it's quiet even down shifting and up shifting and i'm shifting the rear end ring and pinion even reverse it there's i don't hear any appreciable gear noise anywhere it's pretty quiet yeah i hear the thumping yeah. thumping yeah. But I, I think we're, we did good, even though we had a twisted shaft and we dealt with it. We had gears that didn't fit. We dealt with it. You know, we dealt with everything. Yep. And then we, now we have a beautiful car. And today's test run, we went from zero to, I think, 52 was the most we had indicated. Yep. So that's, a, and that's, it's within a mile an hour of yeah. being right. So. There's a lot of wind. We were going fast. Yeah, the, yeah it, it was fine with a couple of people in it and a single cylinder car. That's... <laughs> pretty good that's really good well alan uh this is clearly a success i'm not sure what you have left to do other than just enjoy it and drive it hey i'll be keep taking things apart every day anyway it, just, you still find little just things looking at each piece tweak oh on. there's a little wear on this piece <laughs> okay <laughs> and that's the joy of someone with, that keeps restoring and, and the job's never quite over is yeah, it yeah and then the, the job behind you is our 1907 Delaney Belleville, which yep, that's, a, I'll be putting that back together, probably putting the engine back in and all tomorrow. And Oh, you're starting on it now. You're starting to put it together. Yeah, the engines, I finished it already. And so we have stuff to do. Very good. Well, Alan, thanks for bringing us along. Thank you. Okay.